I have a story that is often told of a prince named Hamlet in days of old. His troubled mind we shall explore as I take you now to Elsador. In this royal castle on Denmark's coast, near the sentries keep watch at their post. For the past two nights they've seen a strange sight, a phantom ghost who stalks the night. Now it's past midnight and close to the time when the clock tower bell will begin to chime. Look, there it comes again, in flashing armor and with stately gait, the ghost moved towards at a steady rate. For though King Hamlet was two months dead, his wife, Queen Gertrude, had once again wed. Her dead husband's brother had asked for her hand, and so Claudius became the king of the land. Claudius smiled as he looked at his wife. Then he saw Hamlet. Come here, my son. My father is only two months dead, yet people are dancing with joy. Where does this happiness come from? My heart drifts in a sea of despair. My mother is swept in a whirling pool of lies. I hang my head and I cry. I am impatient! Tis a madly grief! But how? I can offer you a relief. Think me as your father, and in Denmark remain. Hamlet, don't let grief touch your heart. Your father's soul marches through you. Memories will keep you alive. Don't let those moments vanish into sadness. It will kill your spirit. Tears will not bring you back. Great. And so Prince Hamlet was left alone, lamenting for the world he once known. My father is dead, and my uncle is king, by giving my mother a wedding ring. Dearest Hamlet, I have some shocking news, my lord. Yesterday, while we were on duty, the ghost of your father rose above the tower. I tried speaking to him but he would not talk. As soon as the cock crowed once, twice, thrice, he began to slowly fade. All that was left was a chilling silence. The heart and the blood spilled upon thy earthly grave, staining thy flesh. Dear father, awake, it bodes not well. The visions of the mind threaten my very soul. I knew nothing of this new plan. Neither did I, Salonius, the king's right hand man, in his job as chamberlain, he had advised everyone, including, of course, both his daughter and his son. Laotis, my boy, as he leaves the front today, I have some counsel I want you to obey. Think before you act. Be friendly to others. Dress as well as you can, but keep it well clean. Neither borrow nor let the be. This, above all, to thine own self be true. Farewell, my son, and blessings go Clonius turned to his daughter with further advice. This time, though, he was more concise. Dear Sophia, I hear that there is some attraction between you and Hamlet. Is that true, my dear? Do not, and we do not care for it too high. Your payment will be sadness. Grief is worse than love. I advise you to jump. And that is my final word. Evening finally came. Angels of grace defend us. All call came. Father, royal dame, explain why you have come. What do you wish to gain? Sparkly, my hour has almost come. I am that father's spirit, doomed to walk in them. At dawn, I render up my Thou didst ever, thy dear father love, revenge his foul and most unnatural murder. Murder most foul. As I slept peacefully that day, your uncle crept like a piece of bread. A poisonous liquid poured into my ear, then slunk away with a laughing sleep. Your uncle stole my life, my crown, and my feet. Set my torch in spirit. Adieu, adieu, adieu. The fire of hatred burns in my soul. Claudius is a liar and a thief. Most heavenly angels, give me strength to keep me sturdy. I shall sweep away all cares and banish small thoughts. 
I am so out of joy. Nothing can stop me now. Before long, it seemed Hamlet had changed. The talk of the court was that he was deranged. Dear Sophia, we may doubt that the world is flat. We may doubt that all books are true. We may doubt that squirrels can fly, but never doubt that I love you. You are my golden sun in the sky. You are my very sufficiency. You are a jewel in my life. So how might you just love me? I may not be the greatest poet, but that is what I feel. You warm my heart. I will not welcome your love. Oh, Father, the most terrifying thing has happened. Prince Hamlet lodged into my chamber. His stockings were streamed with blood and limped around his ankles. He grabbed me by the wrist and stared at me what seemed like forever. Then he walked away, his firm glance never leaving my eyes. Girls and friends, I have begged you to be here because I need your help. As you know, Hamlet has changed dramatically. If you succeed, or in more degree, you are a man I can trust. I know you can do it. I stand alone, a crumpled coward. I have failed my loving father. If actors can express their emotions, why can't I? Tomorrow, I will act just perform the murder of Gonzago, a murderous theme to murder a king. I will watch how my uncle reacts. If his conscience overflows, it will be absolute proof. Meanwhile, King Claudius was still uptight. The cause of Hamlet's madness had not come to light. Gertrude, please leave us. Polonius and I will hide ourselves where we won't be seen. If love the cause, it will soon be here. My lord. To be or not to be? That is the question. For the meaning of life had become confused. The world for me become a chore. To die is to sleep and nothing more. To live in not harmony on this planet or to die the pangs of death. That is the question. Why live in a world with grudge and scalawags? It could all be settled with a mere rapier. But to die is to fall into an everlasting slumber. My life is full of unwanted memories, but to decide with the blow of a dagger, is that the answer to my misery? A sudden movement caught Hamlet's eye. He turned and saw Ophelia standing close by. Hamlet Where now suspected spies everywhere. He felt betrayed, and Ophelia was the snare. Where is your father? Hamlet snarled in disgust. Get thee to a nunnery, woman I distrust! My heart is washed away in sadness. Hamlet is a madman. His love has gone stale. One slip and it's all over. Here one day, gone the next, like ice cream melting in the blazing sun. And that's why they say love is blind. And they are right. The king dashed from the tire. There is something fishy going on here. Hamlet is up to something. His thoughts are so deep and Big, I fear they are dangerous. Here comes the play! Hamlet, sit by me, I pray. But he joined Ophelia, who was astounded. The burner of Gonzago, the trumpet sounded. Subdue. 
I'll send him to England, along with you. I'll prepare a letter without delay. I will do as you say. A brother's murder can never be denied. What form of prayer can serve my turn? Forgive me, my fellow murder? My crown, my own ambition, my queen? In the corrupted world, this may be routine, but tis not so in heaven. Now is my chance to slay the coward. With one blow, my deed could be done. Yet, he's in deep prayer. This is definitely a drawback. I shall await my vengeance for a more appropriate time. What is the matter, mother? Why did you send for me? <coughs> Thou hast thy father much offended. Mother, you have my father much offended. Have you forgotten who I am and your place? The queen, wife of your husband's brother. And were it not so, you are my mother. <laughs> Polonius was hidden behind the curtain wall, and he heard Gertrude's bright to call. Help! Help, I say! A rat! Who, Polonius? I mistook you for the king. I never wanted to see you dead. Hamlet, are you out of your mind? What have you done? Open your eyes. The one I adored, the other I despised. A murderer and a villain who was never sincere. Oh, mother, don't you see? He's right there with eyes of fire. He glides through your very chamber. Have you forgotten how your love for him grew, the combines of an April rainfall? Reality is in my bones, not madness. Dear Hamlet, your mother and I are sending you to It's for your own good, trust me. There is no option. The ship is waiting. When the wind catches, you'll be on the way. Consider it a holiday. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the castle, near the chamber of the queen, Ophelia wandered back and forth, begging to be seen. Ophelia exited my room, her arms fleeing in the air, and her face was as pale as the person of the Tears overran her cheeks, and her tired eyes had lost her dreams. As memories of her dead father creep away, there is nothing left but madness. Laertes had learned of his father's tragic death, and now desired vengeance if it cost him his last breath. Give me my father! We're prepared to die! Then Ophelia returned with flowers in her hand. There's Rosemary, that's her memory. <laughs> Pray you love, remember. Here are the pendant to thoughts that they signify. I would give you some violets too, but they withered all. My beloved sister Ophelia has gone mad. She is totally out of control. Her thoughts are lost in our father's too. My head is spinning in sorrow. I can bear it no longer. Do you comprehend? Your feud is with Hamlet. I am your friend. Venom, 
to you in thy way. Hamlet, no! Ah. All was silent. Hamlet looked around. Then he slumped to the ground. To tell my story, now rest with you. And now, we too must part. Now cracks a noble heart. Good night, sweet prince. All honor thy bequest. And flights of angels sing thee to thy best.